Okay, um, so my name is Jack. I am the lecturer for ICW. Uh, basically what I'll do is uh, I'll share with you my experience of picking this paper and bit of structure of the program. Uh, basically, you know, because I know you guys are from UM and I used to teach there as well. So I know the kind of, uh, you know, the things that you guys are looking for, all right? Uh, in the past, I think in, uh, what I've done is, um, I've actually taught the ACCA program in the uh, campus, your, your UM campus, okay? So uh, there were a lot of students uh, that, you know, that are from, uh, IC, uh, from ACCA, okay? They have taught uh, the P3 paper, all right? Um, what about currently, what about the UM students that I am teaching in uh, ICW? It would be the students who have actually, you know, are uh, graduated and they are now working in the big firms, all right, and then in the big firms, they are being sent to the uh, part-time program to do the ICW program with this. So uh, I will know uh, the kind of things that you guys need and how um, you would like to angle this particular uh, session, right? So I won't go into a lot of the details of um, the things that you have actually researched about. So, and I'll keep a lot of time to actually go on the Q&A, right? Because I'm sure you all have a lot of questions relating to this program. Right, uh, especially you know how uh, you can actually get through this program. Is it going to be difficult? All right, is it going to be uh, something that is doable or not? And how will it be like for a student that is a degree student? Okay, will it be possible for you to pass this paper? All right. So um, I will give you the structure of this and basically go into uh, what they are looking for in ICW and to see whether you can actually give that to them or not. All right. So um, okay, I will start by telling you that uh, ICW has to establish. Okay, since 1880, all right? So more than a hundred years of experience of, um, you know, the in the profession. And uh, at this point in time, they are a total of uh, 189,000 uh, members and students that is in ICW. And you will notice that of course, uh, it is not as big as uh, other qualifications. The reason is because their main focus is actually in the European Union. Right, so uh, it's quite exclusive and they have never actually come up of UK. Uh, it's only like in the last 20 years they started to come out of UK, right? To start to uh, sell the program to the rest of the world, right? Uh, and the other programs were doing that since 50 years ago. So it's more of uh, the history and because of their recognition in UK. So um, that's why, you know, their focus was mainly in UK. So the key difference between the this program and the other professional programs is this particular Chartered Accountants Worldwide Association, all right? So which means that if you are a ICW member, if you're a graduate of this particular qualification, so what's gonna happen is if you go to Singapore, all right, you no longer need to take any extra papers. You will also be recognized as a Chartered Accountant in Singapore. And I have a lot of students now in Singapore even though they have not even completed the paper because of the recognition, right? So um, this is where uh, this would be a very strong passport for our students to be able to move from one location to another location. So um, you don't have to take any extra papers when you're in Singapore. Essentially, you know, you are recognized as a chartered accountant in Singapore, as well as Australia, New Zealand, and of course in UK, all right? So um, very high portability, I would say, okay, in terms of this qualification. If you take other qualifications, you have to check whether they are even recognized as the uh, chartered accountant in that country or not. So that is one thing that you need to really check because after you finish the program and then when you go to Singapore to work, right, you might get stuck, all right, to say that, oh, huh, you mean I'm not uh, recognized? So you need to check, you need to make sure that whichever program that you go, go into, uh, what would be your plan? If you plan to go to other countries, right, uh, would it be easy for you to be easily recognized by the country? Okay, so. That is the key thing that you need to think about, right? The Chartered Accountants Worldwide is a very exclusive um, association that not all our uh, professional bodies will belong to. And then um, I'm going to talk about the structure of the program, okay? Whereby it starts off with a certificate level. So if you have a UM degree, all these six papers will be exempted. Okay, and I know that uh, UM has a deal with ICW whereby there are certain papers at the professional level that is also exempted. All right, so I believe that uh, I think by end of next year, if you take the examination next year in third year, 
um, I believe that you are even going to be exempted for all these six papers. So meaning all total of 12 papers here will be exempted and you only need to take the three papers at the end. Okay, so um, how does this scheme work? If let's say if you are not within the uh, you know, recognition, let's say you are already in the fourth year, uh, if you're the, in the fourth year, the maximum amount of uh, recognition in terms of exemptions would be up to uh, whereby you have to take the financial accounting reporting as well as audit and assurance uh, and also uh, business planning as well as tax compliance. So because these are all standards that are on the UK, so if there is no um, tie up in terms of your, um, you have, you, you are already in the fourth year. All right, so your exemptions will only up to eight papers. You'll be getting exemption for business strategy and technology and financial management, all right? So if you get more, all right, meaning that let's say if you are in the second year this year, and then you're going into third year next year, and you're gonna take an exam in the third year in your university, then you may get an exemption for the uh, other four papers, a total of 12 papers. So when you finish your, IC, uh, finish your UM qualification, uh, what's gonna happen is you will go straight into corporate reporting, strategy business management as well as a case study the last three okay so um what is icaw really looking for as a professional accountant uh is that they want you to be a individual that is technically competent they want you to be objective they want you to be able to have the ability to um you know uh, make professional judgments, all right, um, and whereby you will have this professional skepticism you know, to represent the public. So this is the key objective of it. And all professional accountants will follow these five ethical codes, which is the integrity, objectivity, professional competence, uh, professionalism, as well as confidentiality. So the aim is still in that direction, all right. So but what is so good about this particular program is the way that they structure it that they actually built you at one level to the next level, all right? It's like at the certificate level, at the certificate level, their main focus will be about 100% on knowledge, all right? 100% on knowledge. And then at the professional level, they will be focusing more on the application, all right? Talking about application, okay? 75% uh, and 80% of, 75 to 80% of the marks are allocated to your ability to exercise your skills, all right? Your application uh, skills, all right? Whereas the other 20% will be on the ability to have knowledge, the, the knowledge that you have. So like, for example, the paper that I'm teaching called Business Technology and Finance at the certificate level, all right? At the certificate level, it's all testing your knowledge. So we want you to gain that knowledge first, all right? And then when you move to the professional level, we are still testing you on the same knowledge but we're going to give you a case and ask you to use that particular model to analyze the case and to make a judgment of whether the organization is in a positive or negative position. So it's like when you are in the certificate level, you'll be taught how to use the, what is the Porter's five forces, all right? So you're in the degree program now, you should know what a Porter's five forces is, okay? But when you go to the business strategy and technology, you are asked to consider whether the forces that is around the organization and the environment of the organization, is that going to be favorable or unfavorable to the organization? So you will apply the Porter's five forces to see how you will be able to determine whether there are any opportunities and threats that's in the environment. So very applicable uh, way of testing you. So it's the same thing for all the other subjects. You give them that we give you the basics, the lower order thinking at the certificate level, and then we move you up to the professional level and test you on the same knowledge, but on the application, okay, on the application, all right? And then at the advanced level would be what we call the technical integration, okay? So the professional level technical things are actually more difficult than the advanced level. But what do we test you at the advanced level is that you're going to be advising the board of directors as though that you are already a professional accountant, whereby in the paper that I teach, which is strategic business management, you're going to advise the organization to consider what would be the options available for the organization to manage the problem with the customers who are having a high bargaining power and what are the strategies that we can actually take on from not just only a business strategy perspective, 
but also from a financial management perspective in terms of what kind of investment I should take on, all right, what kind of ways am I going to fund the development, okay? So we're going to combine the subjects in a professional level and combine them to test you to see whether you can technically integrate them. So the strategic business management at the advanced level is a combination of 40% business strategy, 40% financial management, and 10% financial accounting reporting, financial, financial accounting and reporting, and 10% of audit and assurance. So in strategic business management, what do you do? You basically have to consider things like, should I merge with another company? And if I merge with another company, what kind of capital should I use? Should I be borrowing money? Should I be raising finance? That's all financial management. And the company that you're going to be buying is a company that is in another country. So if you were to buy the company, what would be the financial reporting standards that I need to comply with? All right, how do I combine the company and how will the accounts look like? And before you can do all of this, you will also be required to do audit and assurance to do a due diligence of whether this company is really worth buying or not. So I'm combining four different subjects, all right, to make a business decision. So it is very well integrated. You learn all the technical skills at a professional level. And when you come to the advanced level, we are testing to see whether you know how to take on all the different skills to be able to make a decision, all right, to advise the board of directors. And for corporate reporting, what do we do? We actually combine the financial accounting and reporting and audit and assurance, all right? That will be the two papers that we will combine together, all right, to see whether you know how to do proper corporate reporting and what kind of uh, IFRS standards that you can use and what would be the audit implications if you do this and that, all right? So what you can see here is at the advanced level, at the corporate reporting and strategy business management, all right, we are combining the subjects for you. All right, to see whether can you use all of it to make decisions, all right? And one thing that is very interesting about this paper is that you are going to be bringing in your textbooks, all right? It's an open book test because they understand that in this particular real world, all right, you don't actually have to put everything in your head to make a decision because we're going to test whether can you make the right decision? Can you make the right uh, way? Uh, can you have the professional skepticism to consider all the information that you have? We want to test you on those skills. We are not testing you on memorizing work, all right? Well, some other qualifications, what they will do is they don't give you the open book, all right? So you have to have to memorize everything. And on top of that, you have to make the decisions, all right? So at that level, at that high level, right, we are not going to test you whether you remember or not, okay? Because we know in the real world, you are also going to be accessing information, all right? And on top of that, even at the professional level at this point in time, the audit and assurance, right? We are even going to give you this system called inflow, whereby during the examination, you will be using big data analytics to inter to, 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 to pull data out of this in data and uh, analytics to be able to advise the organization on what is the problem that they're having or what are the things that they are going to be uh, you know, facing in terms of the audit. All right. So in our examination, we have even integrated the uh, data analytics software to allow you to get a real world experience of how this is done. So I think we are the only qualification that has this particular capability to test you also on how you are going to be using the data analytics softwares, all right? So at audit assurance and corporate reporting, we will do that, okay? And finally, all right, we're gonna give you one big case study. And this case study is a combination of corporate reporting as well as strategic business management. So you are really going to be acting at the board level and you have to be technically competent to be able to make the decisions. So that is how this program is structured, all right? So what you have learned at the certificate level is all going to be cascaded or rather to be scaffolded in terms of your skill level all the way to the top, all right? It's going to be the same IFRA standard. It is going to be the same model but you're going to now not just only use that model, but also to combine the other technical knowledge to allow you to be able to make a final decision. Because at the end of the day, right, what happens is your role as a professional accountant is not just only preparing accounts, your business advisors, now we call you business partners, all right? So as a business partner of the organization, what do you do? You are there to give advice. 
And you cannot just tell us that, oh, I am good with corporate reporting, but I'm not good at financial management. I'm not good at business strategy. All right. So you can't do that as a person that is a professional. All right. You have to be able to have an understanding of the whole business. All right. Or else, all right, if you are not tested on how to make decisions like that, okay, then in the end, okay, how are we going to confirm that you are really going to be a professional accountant? So that's why students who have actually completed this program, right, their marketability is very high. The reason is because the way that we test our students, the way that we transfer the skills to the students is what we call very transferable. It's not like after you have studied it, you give it back to the lecturer, okay? It's not what you have studied already, you are actually not going to be able to use it anymore. It's like at the certificate level, we are going to show you a video on how to swim. All right, I'm going to give you some objective question to test whether you know the basics of swimming. And then at the professional level, we're going to throw you into the water and see whether you know how to swim. All right. And then after that, at the advanced level, we'll start putting some fish and this fish could be a shark or it could be a crocodile. All right. And to see whether you can handle it or not. All right. And on top of that, you have babies to take care of. All right. So this is where, all right. Uh, but we cannot just simply just throw you in a deep blue sea. We have to slowly build your skills. All right, slowly build your skills. And finally, the case study becoming could be a tsunami. But don't worry, because at the end of the day, all right, you will learn how to swim, you learn how to handle problems, you learn how to do that. All right, it's all very practical, very applicable, very real world. All right, whereby you're not just going to study the theory for theory. It's all going to be something that you're going to really use in the real world. All right, so this is the key reason why uh, students who have actually completed this program, right, they are very, very marketable because we know when we hire an ICW student or a graduate, they are not an individual that is just only a regurgitation of theory or just only technically sound. They are able to be adaptable, all right? No matter how they are given a problem, they know how to solve it. So what is the reason why we have education? The main reason why we have education is to solve problems, okay? No matter what type of problems we throw at you, you are still able to be able to give us the best solution for the problem, all right? And some people will think that it's about creativity. No, it's not about creativity. It's about whether you have got the technical skills to understand the key root of the issue that you are facing, all right? And then I'll give you a solution that is feasible, suitable, and acceptable to you that is going to not just only think about, all right, your organization's perspective, but also from a sustainability perspective, from a worldwide view perspective, all right? So your role as a professional accountant is much more than just only profit, okay? So, and then of course, students will say, wow, it looks very difficult. Huh? Look at the pass rates, okay? 70%, 80%, all right? Why so high? It's because the qualification is very transparent. They tell you exactly what they need from you, all right? You prepare for it, you go and prepare, practice all their questions and learn how to do it, okay? And they're not testing you on whether you have got the ability to regurgitate theory. It's all about your skills. And once you get it, you get it, all right? And we won't, tell, we won't surprise you. We won't actually uh, be in a way that, you know, uh, we will give you something that you have not studied before, all right? Because we're testing you on your skills, okay? And that's why the pass rates are much higher than a lot of other qualifications at the final level because when you go through the program, okay, you are really prepared bit by bit, all right, slowly guiding you to get there. Definitely, when you look at a case study, of course, it's going to be difficult, but it's the step by step that we properly scaffold you on top, all right, to build you to that level, okay, that actually allows you to have the confidence to pass the paper. Okay, that's how this qualification does it, all right. So that's why you see the pass rates are much higher than a lot of other higher level uh, papers at the other qualifications. Why? Because they are transparent, okay? They even tell you exactly what they are going to be looking for. And the framework is the same throughout the certificate level, professional level, and the advanced level. So how do we test you? We test you on these four things, all right? From the lower level to the highest level, we want to know whether, do you know how to use information? Do you know how to combine the information from financial, non-financial, and qualitative information that is given to you, all right? And then structure it into the ratios, the formulas, the models to discover what is the problem so that you can give us a solution and apply judgment on what is right and what is wrong 
to be really able to diagnose the problem that the organization is having and also to make a judgment to see whether are you lying to me or not lying to me, right? When you tell me that uh, this particular vaccine is good for me, but then you will be developed in a way that you will be questioning whether are you biased, are you not biased, all right? A professional skepticism is going to be able to uh, question the assumptions that you're giving to me, all right? So this is all from the perspective of risk management. And then finally, you're going to conclude to tell me what is my problem? Okay. How are we going to be able to solve the issue? What would you do to solve the problem? What are the steps that we need to take? Short term, long term, and how would you communicate to different stakeholders? So from the certificate level all the way up to the top, all right, we are basically cascading you towards being able to make a decision. All right. It might be from a management accounting point of view, we are asking you to assimilate things like um. What is relevant cost? What is direct cost, indirect cost? Okay. But then when you go up higher level, we are going to look at the organization's cost structure with the pricing model. And then when you go up even higher level, we're going to look into the profitability as well as the balance scorecard of the organization, slowly, slowly building you up, all right, bit by bit. Okay. So one thing very good about this qualification is all the examiners, all the particular organizations, uh, you know, the way that they are testing you, right? They are all complementing each other. How well they complement each other is that if there is an element in the syllabus that I add on to business strategy, and I realize that that is going to be replicating something that is in management accounting, they will remove one of the elements and won't make you study double the work, all right? But at the end of the day, it's all something that is needed to reach to the top. And if you look at all this particular list that I have here, look at the top, this at a certificate level, the professional level as well as the advanced level, every single level, let's say if I'm testing you on assimilation of information, all right? So the information given to you could be single source information at a professional level, but when you go up to a higher level, the information given to you will be multiple information. And how do you structure the problem? The problem could be a very structured problem at the beginning. They will give you all the numbers in mind. And then later, the numbers could be scattered everywhere. How do you actually combine them together at a final level? All right, you may have to make some assumptions to produce those numbers. So all this is all very well planned. And even at the case study level, we are just basically testing to see whether, do you know how to gather information? Do you know how to assimilate the information? Do you know how to process it and turn it into something that will tell me whether I've got a problem or a solution or not? All right, and can you apply judgment? Can you come up with a conclusion, recommendation, or communication? We want people to solve problems. We just don't want people to just only process, 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 process. At the end of the day, so what's the problem solution, huh, people? Don't know all. Let me ask my accountant. Okay, so that's not going to work. All right. So when they ask you a question, you know they're going to expect you to. Okay, I know you have a problem. I know how to solve the problem. I will tell you these are the steps to take. It's like when you are going to a doctor. You cannot expect the doctor to ask you, um, what do you think that the internet say? Uh? All right. Do you think that is, uh, you know, boy, based on your research, what do you think would be the best solution for you? The doctor will have to diagnose what are the issues that you have. Okay. And to be able to tell you exactly what will be the recommended action to take on. Okay. So the organization may be unhealthy. They are coming to you asking you to check their cholesterol level. They check your blood pressure, uh, pressure to check whether their organization is sound mind or not in terms of way of liberating. And then at the end of the day, how are all this going to be related to the financials of the organization? Are you able to see the connection between all those things? All right. So that's essentially how this particular qualification is structured. And those of you who are concerned about how technology is going to impact your role as an accountant, yes, it will impact you definitely. If we look into all the technologies that we have in the qualification, it has all been integrated in every single one of the papers that you're going to be taking. All right. And in 2011, in the paper AA and as well as CR at the end, they are even going, to, they have already in, uh, included this software called Inflow into your examination, whereby you'll be taught how to read the data, interrogate the data, and pull the data. I think that's all from me. I guess basically, you know, you guys are very concerned of whether. You know, are you able to handle this paper or not? All right. So, well, basically, you know, if you are in the program already, okay, you will have all the resources to be able to allow you to get through the particular qualification.
And even your examination is done on a computer software, whereby you're given Excel spreadsheets to use to process the numbers. All right, and the formulas in Excel spreadsheet are all available to you to use because that's really emulating what is happening in the real world. All right, so I think that's all from me. All right, so if you have questions, you may ask. And these are my two colleagues who are here with me today, and they will also be assisting me in answering your questions, with especially the technical questions on the intake dates and all those things, as well as maybe some uh, you know technical areas of how many qualifications. So this is my contact number. If you want to contact me, this it is. And um, you can always contact me for queries. And if you want to contact about admission, Mr. Chilong and Evelyn would be the one to contact. You can ask questions now. You can choose to type in or you could unmute yourself to ask questions. Anybody? Anyone? Uh, hi. Hi. Um, yeah. Yes. All right, uh, so I would like to inquire on uh, the fees or the rates for our tuition uh, provider if we're, if we're taking the ICAW course. Chilong will answer that. Yeah, uh, let, me let me share my screen. Uh. Jack, let me share my screen. Yeah, okay. Okay. So um, Lavinia, so basically um, under the uh, UM, uh, okay, UM structure, we actually have a, a special rate um, given to students who actually in, um, in, uh, who actually um, interested to actually sign up for the ICW program. We actually um, charging 1,005 per paper for the professional level, um, like, what Jack has said that depending on um, your degree, um, year of degree, whether have you um, have you guys uh, signed up for the strategic um, strategic credits or something uh, from the ICW? Let's say if you um, are able to get all the twelve paper exemptions, then you um, go straight into the final three. That final three um, will be sponsored by the ICW authorized training employer. Um, that you will not have to worry lah. Um, the employer will be will actually able to pay for you. But let's say so happen that you um, are not um, did not manage to get all the twelve paper assumptions, you still left um, around probably four papers or three to four papers or something. Um, each paper in professional level we are charging one thousand five. Um, if you compare it to our um, the normal rate that. Uh, part-time fee that we are charging uh, for normal students, we are charging 1,850. So under UM students, we, have a, we actually give up a special rate, only 1,005. And um, the learning material, um, you will have to actually pay the uh, digital learning material that will cost you roughly around 700 plus. Okay. And then if you, um, and so happen that you can't even make uh, pass the paper during your first round, if you want, if you tend to receive the paper, re-attend class again, uh, for re-attend classes, there will be no tuition fee charges. We will actually pay for the tuition fee. So basically, upon registration, you come in, you just have to pay the resource fee. We will waive the um, initial registration fee, uh, means the enrollment fee, plus the library deposit, so that you will not have to pay. That uh, will cost you roughly around 950, but uh, we will waive that, you don't have to pay. So you just have to pay 50 ringgit plus 1,005 per paper. Okay, um, then this is actually the papers that uh, we suggested, um, suggest students actually to go for it. Like, let's say if you left um, seven more papers to go, so you can actually plan, you can actually do the paper during your year three, or if you do not want, you can actually start in year four. So um, this is actually a recommended paper like, to be um, complete during your year three and year four. So let's say, 
the, let's say if you do not intend to do it in year three, you can actually sign in year four, not a problem at all. Okay. And uh, whatever paper, you can clear as many papers as, uh, as you can during your years of degree. Then after you finish your degree, then you will continue um, your studies during your working. Um, this is where you will sign a training contract with the employer. You will sign a three plus one year training contract. So you are able to complete the remaining paper during your year one. Then when you come into year two, then you do your um, true paper in advanced level, CR, SPM. Then your last year, you will do your case study paper. So this will be the, the standard structure like, in a way. Like. For okay. those of you who are able to get uh, all the 12 paper assumptions, so you left, um, let's say if you left only three, um, then doing a training contract, you might be able to actually start one paper during your year one. Then your year two, you do another paper. Then your year three, you do your case study paper. Uh, that can be arranged during the uh, signing of training contract with the auto ICW auto training employer. Yeah, I think okay. that because it depends very much on who you are signing with because different uh, authorized training providers will have their own uh, conditions, terms and conditions. So I think uh, what Chilong has given to us is basically the standard, uh, whether you are able to do the papers uh, during your final year or not, I think you will still need to get a training provider, a training uh, contract first before you are able to do that. Okay, unless uh, there is a separate arrangement by ICW to allow you to finish those papers first. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, and the other question on the classes now, okay, uh, we have actually started off hybrid this semester, okay, but because of the MCO, we have all gone back online. Mm -hmm. yep. So what happens uh, during online classes would be, uh, of course, a, we will teach online and then you have access to all the recordings, all right? So, and on top of that, okay, uh, we also allow my students, right, for my, for, for example, for my paper, SBM, Strategy Business Management, I will give them access to the uh, business strategy paper uh, recordings as well, because uh, you got exempted for it, but you need to have a little bit of basics of how the paper is being handled, okay, and I will basically go through with you on the, uh, the basics first, then you come into the strategy business management level. So the fact that you are exempted, right, of course, you know, you already got the basic knowledge, but you will still need to get a bit of uh, technical terms right on how they are going to be testing you in a certain area, all right? So, um, you know, when you come to join us, all right, you are going to be taken care of because the, the lecturers who are going to be teaching you at the professional level are also the same lecturers that will teach you at the advanced level. So we will know how to carry the knowledge all the way up back to the, to the advanced level in the event that you're exempted for the professional level. So there's continuity there. And you have access to the uh, recordings of, for my lectures, right, uh, lower level papers, so that you can actually get a good understanding of how the foundation is. So for UM students, the advanced papers, uh, whether do it on the final year or not, all right, it really depends on who is your training provider, who's your training uh, ATE. Okay, so then only we would know whether you are required, then you only we know whether uh, you should work first, then only you should uh, do the papers. Because some of the firms are very strict, whereby you must work for at least one year first before they allow you to actually do uh, any of the papers, right? And whether does it actually help you with uh, scoring marks, scoring enough? Because like, for example, corporate reporting, right? you will be required to use things like your audit knowledge, okay? So you are already going to go on audits. So then it will of course be a natural progression for you to actually do the paper as well. And it's going to really do help you with your understanding of, you know, uh, the syllabus, okay? Because you have got the practice of it already. Any other questions? Um, hi, I have one question regarding, yes. um, regarding the, I forgot what to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no problem. Chiyi, <laughs> maybe you start first. Um, I think it is um we would like to know about the class term of ICAW or the schedule of the classes. Stages of the classes. Um, schedule of the class. Oh, schedule of the classes. Oh, okay. Uh, for professional level, all right, your classes are on the weekends. Okay. 
and whereas for the advanced level, you will do block teaching, right? Meaning that uh, when you are with a firm, you'll be given two months off, all right? And during the two months, you will come back for classes, all right, for the two papers, which is CR and SBM together. So the classes will be run in a way that, you know, your firms will give you the uh, holidays for two months, all right, to come back and study. So that's the reason why, you know, they have to make you work for one year first, and then they give you the two months off to come back and study, all right, during for the advanced level. But for the professional level, all right, the classes are on the weekends. Okay, thank you. Oh, I have another question. Okay. Um, uh, if let's say I register um for the March intake for ICW, but um after the first paper, then I stop for one sem or two semester. Then after that, I continue back in some way. Is it possible, or I will be eliminated from the registration in some way? Uh, you know, uh, once you're registered as a Sunway student, you are going to be registered until you withdraw, right? There's a, there's a cool down period of one year. So as long as uh, you let us know, um, let's say if you want to stop for one semester, just have to let us know and uh, um, tell us the reason, then at least we update into system so we can keep you into the system. Otherwise, if there's no um, no communications or, or no nothing, didn't inform us anything, then the system will automatically take you out from, uh, they will, the system will automatically take you out. Uh, then you might have to pay the registration fee again uh, when you come back. Uh, there's a question here relating to tax compliance paper when to register. Um, tax compliance, I think for next semester, uh, do we have a intake for tax compliance? Yeah, we our our intake is actually in in March and um, March and March and September, so you can actually um register anytime um before September. To, before September lah, during that period. Um, all you need to do is just um let me know. Just let me know when uh when to when you want to register, then I can send you the application form. Then um once you fill up the form, then you just send it back to me. Then I'll pass on to the Miss Gita. Uh Gita will uh is the person like liaison person for the registration, then she will register uh you into your system. Then from there she will send you all the materials and everything. Lah. We have printed in March and September. Lah. Exam if you mm -hmm. sign in March, then examination will be in June. If you will sign in September, then examinations will be in December. Yep. Mm -hmm. But for advanced level examinations is uh, slightly different. Um the first one will be no July. The, the last one will be in November. So the professional level papers, they exams the things are uh, four times a year. Right. Whereas the advanced level, the exams are two times a year. Okay, so uh, that's where, you know, your registration would be done, you know, three months in advance of whichever intake that is coming in, uh, whichever exam is coming in. Other questions? Um, Mr. Lee, just now you explained about the cooling period is one year, right, for registration under, uh, as a student under some way. Yeah, so usually about... Ah, uh, yeah, again, okay. sorry. So, yeah. so, so means that like if uh now I would like to stop my uh stop my study in some way, then I will tell you then the period maximum for me to uh to not attending the class in some way is one year. Okay? We will um uh, it's actually delayed by uh, we call it as transfer semester, like you'll be like transfer into two semester each semester, let's say each semester roughly around uh, around three, three, three months, three to six months, uh, depending on the semester. Because ICW, if you come in in March, then the next semester will be in June. Uh, you will continue on the next one in September, you say. So let's say if you miss one semester, then you will carry on to the following uh, following year semester. So that's why um, as long as you let us know, um, within the year, lah, don't, don't let after one year, then you tell us that you want to come back, then then the system will automatically take you out. Then and then one thing also you have to remember is ICW uh, also have an annual fee. Yeah? So <laughs> if you if you miss one year, then if uh, when you come back, right, and you forgot that you haven't paid the annual fee, right? Then you, when you register for an exam, they might not be able to recognize you anymore because you didn't uh, register for the uh, annual fee. So you have to remember that, you know, there are two sets of fees that you have to pay, right? So to be a member of ICW is an annual fee. Right, and then of course, I uh, some way here, right? When you sign up with us, you're already a student here. 
and then in the subsequent sub, uh, uh, semester, if you need to you know, take a leave, all right, that you want to take a break, then you just have to inform us, then we just transfer to the next semester. Okay. Then um, to try not to stop too long, uh, because uh, like what Jack said, um, every subject I say actually do carry knowledge. So if you stop too long, then you might tend to forget that uh, then later on when you do the next paper. <laughs> you tend to go for study break, right? <laughs> <laughs> Having a gap year or something. Any other questions do you all have? Oh, Joey, you have any other questions I'd like to ask? Um, the uh, question just curious. Like, um, if we say, uh, now I'm still a student, so I'm registered under UM with Sunway, then we get some advantage on it, right? And then after I graduate, do, do I still eligible for that? Or I will be independent students, not with okay. UM? Um, let's say if you are talking about ICW uh, because ICW um, after, you after you graduate from your uni right, you will sign a training contract uh, right? so the training contract will be from ICW authorized training employer so usually the training employer is of a corporate client so then you will still be able to enjoy the corporate rate um, so the fee, corporate rate fee is actually almost is actually the same uh, like we are charging you so not to worry on that one as long as you work in our corporate client, then it shouldn't be a problem. And then furthermore, your last three people will be sponsored by the authorized training employer, so that you would not have to pay anymore. And then for the other um, professional level paper, let's say in the event that um, you need some sponsors or something from the, the firm to pay for your fee or something like that, um, that you can actually um, then go during your your interview sessions. Uh, um, you probably you can get them to um, sponsor your studies for the for the for more than more than three papers. I think maybe you might need to um, pay them back or, or there will be some extra con training years contract you, you might have to actually sign with them or something. So depending on different authorized training employer, uh, different contract they offer. Okay, I've got a question here around, uh, relating to the examination, uh, whether the exam is online or physical mode. The exam are all online. It's a matter of whether are you going to do it in a center invigilated by a exam uh, invigilator of ICW, or you're going to do it yourself, and that's a remote invigilation. Okay, so I'm going to now uh, give you a website here, all right, whereby uh, this is where you will see how the software looks like. If you are a student in ICW, you will be experiencing or how to use the soft, uh, you will take the exam using the software. So there's a video in here that actually shows you how the software works, all right? As well as um, if you go down further into this particular page, right? You will notice that there is also this particular uh, audit and assurance practice data sets and all that. So this is a software that I told you that about, all right? Whereby uh, you'll be using it for the examination when you're doing audit and assurance as well as corporate reporting. Right, and there's a video there for you to also see how they actually do the data analytics software. So, um, you know, this particular software was launched uh, in this year, right? So very in time for the COVID-19 because of the fact that, you know, now everything is done digitally, okay? So, and all your textbooks are also uh, digital, okay? So, uh, because ICW embraces a sustainability, so they believe that um, they want to cut less trees, right? So everything is online. Okay, and during the examination, if it is an uh, open book exam, like the higher level papers, uh, the software will actually even have the textbook in there as well, right? You have access to the textbook in there online. So you can actually use things like search function to look for the materials. So do have a look at that particular so exam software, how uh, advanced it is, all right, in terms of how they actually put in both the, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet and all the questions are all in there, okay? Um, the question here is about, the next question is business planning, banking, and business planning taxation, uh, because we've got exemption from the subjects of financial markets and institution under business planning and banking. In order to enjoy the special offer, I saw that age criteria for UM student is maximum 23. So I'm 23 years old, must, must I register this year? Now for the registration on the year age one, right, I won't be able to answer that because that, that's not my criteria. You may have to check with ICW, but I can answer you on the business planning uh, area. Now, um, in the structure of ICW, you notice that um, when I show you the structure just now, maybe I can show you now, just give me a quick one.
if you look at this structure that I've shared with you earlier on, all right, you'll notice that um, there is this section called the business planning. Okay, so there are three options in there. Number one is taxation. Number two is insurance. Okay, uh, sorry, this is number two is insurance and number three is banking. So for this paper, whether you get exemption for banking, taxation or insurance, it is then therefore completing this paper. All right, so if you've got an exemption for uh, the, what we call the banking, all right, then therefore that means this paper is clear. Look, you don't have to do the taxation. Okay, so because this paper, you can take an option of whether you want to do tax, you want to do uh, insurance, or do you want to do banking? Okay, so any of those three, if you pass it, then you are basically clear of this particular paper, business planning. Does that answer your question? Okay. So if you really do want to see how it's going to be like, you know, taking an examination nicely, that you're right, you know, that software would be a very good example of how it's being done. And you know, it's really uh, whereby you know the data analytics software would be also a good uh, way for you to see. And in fact, some of our students are saying, wow, this is even more advanced than the one that we are using in the firm. All right, and very good because that's basically what you are supposed to do and supposed to be able to advise us to the organization to maybe implement such particular software to use in the real world. All right, so you know, you want some a skill that is going to be uh, transferable. You want a skill that you know not something that is going to be obsolete. What are the skills? Your critical thinking, your professionalism, your professional competence, all right? Those are the skills that is no matter where you go, all right, your adaptability, all these particular skills, right, is going to be very demanded, all right? Because, you know, we do not know what's going to happen in the environment or right? anything could change, all right? And your ability to be able to solve any problem, no matter how the problems are thrown at you, you still are able to solve it. That essentially is what we call all right, our very important skills that you are going to be marketable. That's the key thing. Any other questions? May I ask, will this software be used for courses we take in UM for audit and insurance? Um, that one, I'm not too sure. The one you have to check with the, um, you know, your, the exemption process, all right? Because the exemption process is done between you and, and the ICW. So uh, whether this software is going to be used during the audit and assurance, even if it's not used, don't worry, because you will still be tested at the corporate reporting level. Because this software is going to be implemented at the audit and assurance and corporate reporting, all right? Which is the advanced level that you are not exempted. So even if you don't get to use this software and audit and assurance in your UM qualification, all right? You will still have to learn how to use it in the corporate reporting. So that's how well the qualification is designed. So if they want to give you exemptions, they have to make sure that, you know, the key skills that they're giving you, they cannot give you the exemption. Okay. Hope that answers your question. So Chilong has given you the timetable. You can have a look at the um, timetable for ICW. And from there on, you can see the different uh, types of timetable for professional level as well as advanced level, how they all are going to be, right? So it's going to allow you to uh, determine, you know, what's the study schedule like, okay? Definitely it's not going to be something that are, you know, it's not going to be a walk in a park, not going to be easy because otherwise, you know, how are you going to be trusted in, you know, being a professional, right? You cannot expect a doctor to just, you know, just breeze through his program and then you trust your life with him, okay? So same thing like a professional accountant, it, you have to go through a tough program, right? And this is why this is such a marketable program, right? This is why it is such a good program because at the end of the day, if it's so easy, then, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry has it, right? It's not going to be um, valuable, all right? Um, I have one question regarding the examination, especially now the COVID is very um, accelerated for now. And I saw the ACCA exam is now like changing here and there from the CD and the remote, remote style. So I, and then it's got some it's even cancelling and refund back. Like just now I received the information. So I wonder if it is it ICW and then is it got any uh, news uh, about this? In Malaysia, I think. Um, 
this is definitely something that we will not be saying that, oh, it never happened before that whereby, you know, the student systems crash and then, you know, you have to refund the students. Hey, we can't say that we have not done that before, uh, that, that never happened before, all right, because it's all things that are online. But what happens is, you know, there is a lot of ways that we can actually manage the risk, okay, manage the risk. So meaning that, you know, if that happens to you, then you file a report, all right, then you might actually be marked differently, okay? And then, of course, you will be given another opportunity, all right, to receive the exam. If you can arrange it immediately, all right, within the next week, we could actually do that, okay? So, but I would say that um, what I've experienced with ICW is they are very firm in their decision-making process in terms of making sure that things that they decide on is going to be something that is going to, uh, you know, impact the whole population because they have to be professional in what they do. So when the COVID-19 situation, situation happened, okay, they very quickly made a decision that there will be no exams in June, right? There'll be no exams in June, all right? Nobody sits for exams in June, only in September. So that is a very, you know, this is basically what people need, all right? So that people can plan for it, okay? And they have got a very clear uh, sort system, okay? A system that is going to allow you to, or uh, make sure that you will have the result of it, uh, have the exam, even though it's done remotely. So there are many ways to actually uh, find ways to manage the risk, okay? So uh, I cannot say that, you know, it's 100%, there's nothing like that happen because even someone who is going to kick the computer and then power is gone, these issues could also happen, okay? So uh, it's about how they manage risk. When they are doing the examination, will they still have the record of it? All those things would be there. Okay, so there's a lot of uncertainty. It's then it's about how we manage the uncertainty, right? And to be accountable for it. That is the key thing that we have to do, right, as a professional body. I'm not gonna lie to you to say oh 100 percent never happened before. Cannot be right. <laughs> okay. So and we also never know, you know, when we first start the program, we have to do it. Okay, definitely there'll be some glitches now. Right, but that's a matter of how we manage manage the uh, recovery, the business recovery. That's key. Okay, so that's basically you know you are going to be taken care of. That's what we say. Uh, which will they be the advanced levels uh, papers that you'll be taking after you graduate? I would say you take both the CR and SBM together. All right, the reason is because uh, SBM has eighty percent of finance and business. Whereas the other 20% is going to be corporate reporting and audit insurance. So when you're doing CR, you are also doing the corporate reporting and audit insurance. So you are studying both paper together, okay? That is going to be able to allow you to, you know, kill two birds with one stone, all right? And of course you are given the leave, you might as well study both, all right? And then clear up as much as possible, as soon as possible, okay? Because otherwise, you know, when you were to go and study uh, for SBM, then you have to go and study CR, and uh, materials. And if you're going to study CR materials, you're going to study the strategy business materials again. So there's no point for you to do, you know, do it twice, right? So you can actually do both together, all right? And to be able to complement both the uh, topics, both the papers. Hi. So may I know, is there any deadline of registration for the September intake? Uh, Chilo, you want to answer that? Uh, so so far, we advise students to register before the semester starts, so ASAP. So let's say um, they are talking about professional level paper. Um, you can register anytime, um, something, uh, some, uh, register anytime now, or probably last week of June, um, also possible. Uh, but try not to register when the when the class uh, starts uh, then because we need some time to take to register you into the system and then to um, put you into the, the our our online system so that you can you are able to attend classes so try to register earlier lah. and then um, is there any form is there any year four students here any year four students here any year four Final year students? Um, I think yes, yeah. Um, Only year three, year two and year three. La. Um, year four is okay. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, because year four, um, year four students, they, you guys are actually very lucky. Uh, you know, right? I think Andrew actually give us, um, uh, have a session with you guys. For year four students, um, 
even though you guys are not able to get 12 paper exemptions, you guys are getting eight papers, um, the normal exemptions given uh, by ICW. Um, but because you are currently in year four, they have this special um, arrangement that uh, you are able to get the exemption fee with 100% with. So for year four students, uh, so if you plan to embark on into the ICW program and apply for exemption, you don't have to pay for the exemption fee for the eight papers. So all you need to do is to contact um, Andrew. I'm sure uh, I think you guys have Andrew contact the number, right? Uh, contact Andrew, then uh, from ICW, then she, he will give you the uh, the code uh, during your registration. So you just have to apply the code, then the system will automatically waive the eight paper exemption fee. And also the uh, initial registration fee and also the annual sub, they will actually waive during the year that you are in the degree and you only need to pay uh, after you complete your degree. So that's actually, you can actually save quite a lot there for year four. And the next question is uh, about the tax laws. It's UK. Okay, everything that in the ICW is UK UK tax law. UK tax law. Any more question, guys? This is the best time to ask because we have lecturers here. And then when you talk about you know when you do tax. And banking is two different papers, so there's not going to be a complement in there. So there's no need to actually uh, worry about whether uh, if you do the UK tax, whether you have a problem with banking in Malaysia. There are two different papers. Ma. You're not taking um, tax planning. Okay? You're not taking tax planning for the higher level paper. So uh, that would not be a concern. All right. So, but in our uh, the ICW program is all UK tax law, okay? So, and then in UM, you do your business planning, banking, all right? So that one would not be related to UK tax law. So it's a totally separate paper, unless you tell me that, you know, in UM, you are going to be taking tax, the business planning tax. So it's not related there, okay? Uh, Chilong, the other question on the, yeah, the registration part, right? Um, usually, you usually um, students will register do, during their um, year three first semester. So um, you can actually do your registration during your year three first semester. La. Don't have to be so hurry. You don't need to register first during your year three. Okay, good, good, good. Keep the question coming. I think uh, you guys are warming up already. <laughs> There's now no questions anymore. I think Andrew also did a very good job in you know explaining to you the qualification, all right. But from my perspective as a lecturer, all right. So when I'm teaching the program, uh, how I feel about my students' experience, okay, and how do they actually actually go through the paper? And because I also teach students who are from uh, degree programs, what are their struggles? So my solution to them is I also give them my business strategy uh, materials, all right, and I will also make sure that the bridge is there because I cannot uh, assume that your business strategy. Uh, paper that is in your UM is going to be 100% the same as the one that is in uh, ICW. So without your basics in ICWs, then you will be having problems at high level paper. So that's basically, um, you know, some of those concerns that students have. And when, when I teach SBM high level paper, there will be sometimes, you know, students not clear how to bridge the gap. So we offer this kind of solutions for our students. No more questions. <laughs> I think if no more questions, then uh, maybe we, we can end this session. So. Jack, you want to end? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's all for me. I think uh, if I see you next, it will be in the business the strategic business management, right? Which is the high advanced level because uh, you guys are exempted from business strategy and technology. Okay. Uh, but whatever it is, okay, if you when you see me in SBM, okay, if you need help with BST, all right, please make sure that you are going to ask, all right, because um, you know, we need to be able to bridge the gap. That will be the key thing. Okay. So I think that's it. Thank you very much.